All right, one second. Now I have to close the, uh, here we go. There we go. All right. Welcome everybody. Can I film? Um, oh yeah, you can. One second. Let me uh, do that for you. And we'll get your intro this time. Uh, allow to record local files. Yeah. Got it? Got it. All right. Recording in progress. Okay. Welcome to this weekly non-duality Zoom with Don Garland and me. Thank you for coming, everybody. Please keep your microphones muted until invited to speak. This is being shared live on YouTube. So by asking a question, you are giving consent. We encourage you to raise your hand virtually after the brief introductions by unmuting yourself and turning on your camera. Alternatively, you can write your questions in the chat on the YouTube live stream or in the Zoom. This is for entertainment purposes only. And with that, I will pass the mic to Don, please. Hi, so yeah, introduction to non-duality. I'll give a short introduction. So um, so it's the end of identifying with the with the person, the personality, the mind body organism. So it's the collapse of time, which is the historical self. So the identity as we know it when we're growing up, when we're living normal life is we move through time and space in a world that's exterior, exterior to us. And so there's an inside and there's an outside and that's what collapses. So it's seen that there's just life um, life living us, if you like. So there's no agent, there's no ego in the sense there's no one doing any of this. This is just arising and it's arising for no one. So there's nobody here, there's nobody there. Um, and what that tends to do is it brings about a restoration of intimacy with life. So there's just experience of unconditional love, which is um, restful. So it's coming back to where you are. It's peaceful. It's, it's seeing the beauty that's inherent in everything that's visual, that's um, beyond the ego. So it's beyond the mind. All of this seeing is beyond the mind and it's, it's known. So there's nothing actually happening here. On one level, there's nothing happening. Uh, there's no time, there's no space. There's just, at the same time, there is whatever's arising. And so but life goes on as before. It goes on for no one. And it's much nicer. <laughs> it can come as a shock. So it can come as a shock, but a very peaceful, gentle shock. It's a shock with no, uh, your cortisol levels will not go through the roof or anything like that. It's, it's, it's a groundedness. This is actually very grounded. It's, um, it's very seen. So in a sense, there's no looking back. There's no looking forward. It's because there's no need to. It's just everything is here. Everything that's being sought is already the case. So it's, life is fulfilled, it's what you've been seeking, it's your, it's home in a sense. And yeah, so, and that's, that'll do for now. I'll pass over to Walter. Okay. I just shared the Zoom link in the chat. If anyone wants to join uh, from YouTube. Um, Hmm. Non-duality. What is it? Uh, well, that's the question. What is non-duality? How do you give an intro to non-duality? Because it's not a thing. It 
refers to not two. It's not two, it's not one. Any attempt at speaking at it seems to fail because no thing being everything, but no thing is not a thing. I, I hear people saying nothing, nothing, but yet there's so much beauty. Let's see, let's let somebody in. Uh, variety, emotions and thoughts and just everything that makes up life. Is it, is this no thing being everything? And there's no why, there's no meaning or purpose. There's no understanding of that. Like, how is that possible? Or why is that happening? There's no one apart from it to figure it out. It is that thought of why is this happening? Or how is this happening? Or isn't this amazing? Or doesn't this suck? It's all those things. The polarities. There's no one here experiencing that. What is experience? You know, what is sitting in a chair, speaking on Zoom, feeling feelings and sensations? There is no one to know what that is or why that is. I don't believe there's a creative intelligence behind it, a one universal mind creating it. Um, there's a lot of beautiful expressions of this. You know, like God was lonely, so he created all these things from himself to entertain himself. But I imagine that's not the case either. So there's nothing to hold on to. Non-duality is really nothing it's I'm, it's not saying anything it's not giving you anything there's nothing on offer it doesn't help with anything it's just already everything that appears everything that seems to be is this no thing appearing as what seems to be and a lot of speakers get <clears throat> caught up in the words I've noticed because um, I've said the phrase like seeing non-duality and then somebody will say, well, who sees non-duality? Well, there's no one here to see non-duality, but yet there was this apparent experience of a unicity or a, a lack of separation. Uh it's been called a falling away of a, of a me or a sense of a separate self. Um, I, I heard a guy talk about, um, Wayne Lickerman said, uh, it's like describing the absence of a stone in your shoe. You know, you're walking around for years with a stone in your shoe and then one day it's not there. So you're really describing an absence of a sense of separation, of a sense of me and other, me and separate objects. And the so-called seeing of non-duality is just this realization that that's never was the case. There never was a me and another. There was always just this one apparent beautiful, magnificent, mysterious outpouring that can never be understood. Um, even to say pointing at it, there's nothing pointing at something else. If I'm pointing, then the pointing is it. Uh, everything is divine. 
uh, one of my favorite sayings was, um, there is no God, there is only godliness. This is godliness expressing, trying to describe God. You know, God trying to speak about himself or the mystery trying to talk about the mystery. It's every step. It's every apparent person. It's every apparent object. It's every thought. It's the breeze. It's the grass. It's the pizza. And so to say di divinity or some say the beloved makes it sound special and something esoteric. But as I'm sure you've heard, the ordinary is the extraordinary. You can see the mystery imbued in a ordinary object just as much as um, the beautiful sky at night. Um, there's nothing separate, more special. Everything is just, for the individual is just perception and interpretation and preferences and wiring and conditioning but we give everything all the meaning it has without a thought or an emotion or a idea or a concept. There's just pure beingness with no right or wrong, no duality. It's just this isness with no qualities no attributes until I assign them, till I start giving them, till I put labels on things. And then that's my world of experience, which is created by mind, by thought. But without that, nothing is. Nothing is independent apart from my thoughts about it. Nothing exists independently apart from mind. So with that, let's open it up for questions. Type them in the chat or just raise your hand and jump right in. Walter. Yes, Alihio. Uh, Is that you? Yes, it's me. Oh, wow. <laughs> Let's see. Was, was, something came to mind this morning. Uh, the word meist, as in racist or ageist, a meist. A person that is into non-duality and thinks himself different or separate from non-non-dualist. Your thoughts, or 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 Don. Uh, me is um, different or separate from non-dualists. How so? Uh, me is. Let's see. Uh, okay, meist believed belief that as a non dualist you are better than non non dualist. 
Mm -hmm. I don't relate to that, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Doesn't seem like non duality. You think you're better than someone else because you speak of non duality. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just having some fun there. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Don, Don any thoughts on Mias? <laughs> Well, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, who knows? Maybe somebody thinks that. Maybe they don't. Yeah. I don't know. It's slightly amusing. Well, don't be shy. We have over 20 people watching this, so jump right in. Questions or comments? Did he just make that up? <laughs> no, like, was that real? <laughs> yeah, I, I think he did. Right. <laughs> and can you elaborate anything else on that? Uh, uh, it, it was just, to, uh, it was actually just to, uh, yeah, I, th I think I did good. It was to amuse you. No, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Uh, also, also to uh, also because um, it's like um, like uh, belief mm -hmm. is like non do non duality does not exist, but somehow it seems to me it it, it attaches to a certain kind of belief or category. I've noticed that like, um, <laughs> like radical non -dual, radical non dualist don't want to hear anything about no other non duality, because they're wrong. Those people are wrong. Mm -hmm. And only, only the thing I'm into is right. You see what I mean? Sometimes it happens that way. Um, well, I've it's noticed. just like, normal, isn't it? Like, I mean, why wouldn't they? So, but then it's just another person with a conditioned mind, with ideas. Who doesn't have that? Just because you speak about non duality, just because that's been seen. I mean, it, it just goes on, doesn't it? Where influenced beliefs can arise. And, and a high, you know, like it, it, it can fall into the same trap, can't it? I mean, there's, there's no one or even though there's no one, there's no one who's free from that. Absolutely not. I don't I don't believe that there is. So why wouldn't there be? It's, it's just another it could become a dogma so easily, can't it? Just like the hints of it. And. Yeah, and a prohibition almost like this, you know, you can't look at anything else. It's it's kind of like. Why would you be interested if you're interested in anything else? It then it's not really you're not really non-dual or like a purity thing. Like it can become like that, like but or seem like that on the surface. But then again, can no can you all mute yourselves? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ.
<clears throat> yeah, um can, <laughs> I don't know where to find you guys to mute you. Can you hi, can you mute yourself or do something because you guys are really loud. If if you can't mute yourself, <laughs> I can't hear anyone. I yeah, don't know. yeah, I'm not. I'm not hearing anything. Okay, thank you. Can everyone hear me? I can. Okay, sorry about that. I couldn't even find them in the thing because they called in in a weird way. I don't know. Uh, um, all right. Are you back? Uh, yes. Do you have a question? Okay. Oh, thank you. You have a lot of external noise. I can't really, you, can you just hang up? Sorry. Thank you. Okay. We have questions in the, she's calling back. <laughs> Hello? Hello, caller. Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Do you have a question? We're taking your questions for Don Garland today. Don Garland. Okay. There you go. I didn't hear anything, Walter. It's, it's only coming through to me? Yeah, it is. All of that. Yeah. All that noise and shit? All that noise and none here. Yeah. It's... Oh, you're just calling me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Well, she said, is there a purpose to life? What do you think? Is, is there a purpose? Well, that's not answerable, isn't there? I mean, the, this is seeing and this is beyond meaning and purpose, right? And, uh, you know, the individual, that's something an individual creates or not, like purpose. I mean, that's that's something we contrive or or not. But they're after the seeing of non-duality. It's complete, like it's full. It's there's not like a need for meaning and purpose. It, it's sort of beyond that. So but you, you that's not to say at some stage or even right away, you, you, you might want to find something that's purposeful or or to say that there's some, you know, like, you know, some people experience other dimensions or, or whatever have experience where they come back and they they've seen non-duality and they have a sense of, of a of a very, very specific purpose, like they've talked to God or whatever in another realm and they've been told this is what you must do when you get back you must become a teacher you must um tell everybody about your experience you know like but but yeah generally I mean this isn't about purpose I mean non-duality isn't about that so is there a purpose to life I mean all, all those questions are unknowable anyway I mean I think that can be seen anyway like so you know um it's it doesn't seem you know life that that need for that that question kind of falls away in a sense like the ultimate question i mean it it's it's enough so that question comes from a lack the ultimate question of that does come from a lack i'm not to say not to say that <laughs> there you know other people would say otherwise but 
because it isn't enough, you know, like those existential questions tend to dissolve in this seeing. So in one sense, but also, like I say, these are the imponderables. These are, you know, whatever we were here, the existentialists would come up with, well, we have to find our own meaning and purpose. That was the whole existential thinking, but this puts an end to that even. So, you know, biologically you can talk about that, but it's just a story, you know, like for reproduction and survival, the, the whole body's set up to that end, isn't it? So, but that's not what you mean, is it? So like, <laughs> No. Yeah, sorry about that. I don't know how they called in like that, but if you're out there, Jenny, just come in through the Zoom link or type something in the chat, but I don't know what happened just now. You didn't hear her at all, though. No. Oh, nothing. she's asking me questions, but there's like a ton of noise. I don't know. Uh -huh. She's like in a car. With other people, it was a whole thing. No, nothing. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I didn't even, it just came right through. Okay, sorry about that. But yeah, if you're out there, just click the Zoom link. I don't know how you called me like that. Uh, it was different. Uh, can you say something about relationship when there is no one there? Want me to answer that? Sure. So, well, I, it depends what, where you're asking that. I mean, in a sense, if you're talking, you know, from the position of the absolute for just to simplify things, although there is no relative and absolute in, in, a, in a sense as well, like, but, you know, so there is no relationship because there's no one here and there's no one there. There's just one thing. Um, it, I mean, it, it certainly can have an effect on relationship because because of the intimacy and the unloveness with everything certainly it can you know i think it makes relationships more easeful because there's more presence there there's more stillness um there's more space uh but of course that depends on the individual as well how much you know before the before and after story is different in every case so someone's defenses they may have a lot of ego defenses and they see non-duality and those are blown but for another person maybe they're not so um so it, it it there tends to be more um because this involves radical acceptance there seems to be more a tendency to accept the whole person as they present so um and also you're not i think if you are in relationship with someone who is awake there's the knowing that they're not their personal history there's no identity with that so there's a there can be a complete kind of starting again maybe like because that doesn't define you anymore so those old patterns some patterns may continue but they are no longer you're in a sense you're no longer defined by that historical drama you it's not you know you're not trying to feed that or being fed by it so there's definitely a change. There'll, there'll definitely be a change in relating afterwards, for sure, in a positive way, I would say. Um, but that will change from person to person. But yeah, relationships continue. There is that weird thing. I, I think my own experience is that, you know, when you're with someone, you're very much with them, probably, you know, more so than before, if you like talk about before and after. Um, but when they're not there, they're really not there. <laughs> So that can be quite odd as well in a way. So, you know, because, because more of the energy is just in the moment. And so there's an absorption in what's happening. So in a sense, whatever's arising is, is much more vivid than before. And whatever isn't arising is much less in, in a sense. So the energy's where you are and not where you're not. So it can seem strange even, you know, it can feel strange at first because you can get used to like communicating with someone maybe I don't know messaging or something but there's not that so it's, there's so much there's less fantasy if you like maybe um that sort of fantasy connection it seems to be more real that's how I experience it but 
you get used to it because you know it's not to say you can't be in a relationship and that be a reality for you yeah of course it can but it's just whatever's appearing is where your energy is so your mind you know you're not living through the mind because in any way relationships that are lived through the mind tend to be more problematic you, you know like the most unhealthy people it tends to be all fantasy and no reality so in a way it's kind of the reverse of that it's much more based on what is um something like that <laughs> what do you think walter oh sorry i just got all disorientated i you know what i think it was that called me on facetime and it's and oh, it so I was actually doing two things at once and I didn't realize it. I thought they were in the Zoom. That's why I couldn't find them. Uh, okay. I, I probably sounded like a lunatic because it, <laughs> no, it, it, like, <laughs> it was like very loud. Right, okay. okay. And now I understand what happened. They probably didn't even know because they were like, this is really weird. <laughs> <laughs> they probably didn't know I was like on, on the air, so to speak. Okay, well... What do I say about, can I say something about relationships when there is no one there? Yeah, I mean, it's like anything. Uh, there seems to be a relationship. There seems to be two separate individuals interacting, being in a relationship. Um, I had an interesting experience once. Um, this became really vivid that there was no one here and there was no one there, that there were just words coming out here, there were words coming out there and there was no choice. It was just this conversation happening and there was no independent, you know, autonomous individual in, in either body. It was just programming and conditioning, programming and conditioning, just, my programming, their programming. Of course, it's not my programming. It's not their programming. It's just two parent people reacting and responding with no choice in the matter. Um, so there aren't two separate people with free will and choice. There's just uh, words coming out, a response to these words. And it was just very apparent that that's that's what's happening that's what's happening now I, I don't think anyone typing these questions has a choice i think it's just coming out of their own unique programming so to speak um <clears throat> so relationship is is an illusion um some people talk about the um you know, this evolution of consciousness and things like that, which I don't get into, but, you know, it's a human condition. You know, feelings and emotions and interactions and, and you know, something gets triggered and I respond. Maybe I laugh, maybe I get upset. This is, I don't own that. You know, it's just like, animals responding in the way they do and humans responding in the way they do it's just another in other words there's no ownership of any kind of uh response or interaction it's just what's happening um so the next question is people seem to try to use or apply as a method or a means to operate in the world. Is this possible or recommended? Uh, talking about non-duality, people seem to use non-duality to try to use or apply it as a method to operate in the world. Do you think that could be uh, useful or recommended? Um, definitely not recommended, definitely to be avoided. Um... Yeah, because it's, I mean, it's misleading anyway, but to try to emulate that or imitate that is disastrous, really, because it's not like what anybody is saying. It really isn't. And also, 
you know, it's, it's talking about a shift. So you try to act as if you're, you know, you're not your story. You try to act as though there's no one there. You, you, you start to, it's not about minimizing your experience. It's not that what happened doesn't matter. It's not that, you know, okay, you can say in ultimate sense, there's no relationship and no ownership of that. But, you know, like if someone doesn't own what they've just done, they're probably not the nicest person in the world. And maybe you've got a narcissist on your hand, you know, like if you can't have a conversation with somebody and somebody owning their experience, like what's just happened, you know, like in a relative sense. So it's so easy to confuse those um, two aspects to existence, even though there isn't two aspects, but it just makes sense to talk like that, especially in view of a question like that, because, you know, if there's no will, no agency, there's a sense of futility can creep in with that. There really is like, and so there's nothing I could do to change anything. Everything, ever any time attempt to sort of imitate that or assimilate that message seems to end up creating a kind of stasis, um, which is really unhealthy. And, and people do get stuck. They, they do get stuck and then they start, you know, just watching the videos, nothing else matters. I shouldn't, why, why bother dating? Because there's no relationship, you know, all this kind of stuff. It's life negating this. This isn't a, you know, this is, this is about embracing life. This is about life more abundant in a sense. And it's about entering deeply into life. And, you know, I'm not, because there's nothing to run away from. So the feelings aren't run away from in the same way. Pain isn't run away from in the same way. It's, you know, it's, there's that acceptance. There's everything's okay. Even when it's not okay, it's okay. It's, it's that. And, and, you know, it's impossible to convey that. So yeah, it's not, this is not, um, non-duality is, and psychology are incredibly different, like, and they can run into each other in, in the mind, like, and create all kinds of havoc just like any other spiritual teaching it can create you know spiritual bypass that I'm sure most of you have heard of you know you know like so it's heard when it's heard by the mind it's heard psychologically and it's it's not this is nothing to do with that and life goes on in spite of what's being said here life goes on normal at the same time and that seems like a contradiction but and it is in language it is but it's not it's not it's just one thing it's not neither the absolute nor the relative it is just one thing but to speak about it you need to speak in a certain way like to to sort of um get across the complexity of it and the paradox of it and you know but yeah so nothing can be brought you know done to bring you closer to this because it's not a thing because it's not in language because it isn't psychology it's not psychological it's not a process it's it's the end of all that. It's the complete collapse of that because that's old time based thinking. That's not this. Um, so yes, don't do that. <laughs> that's like, don't try that at home kind of stuff. Like, but you're saying that it's compulsive. There's something compulsive about we imitate what we admire and this resonates with you. you you know it, it gets in it just gets in just like saying don't think about meditation or where it gets you just meditate if you're going to meditate just just sit and just focus on your thoughts or your breathing or whatever it is you're doing what kind of meditation but people will you know it's natural for us to look for a change to look you know to see things as a process it's it's impossible for us to just do that unless the self collapses in which case everything is a state of meditation which does not negate meditating you can meditate while being in a meditative state like it's again it's paradoxical so yeah <laughs> yeah i'd say um it's not something you can use just because when i'm describing non-duality anyway it's it's already everything so it's in the 
attempt to apply it. It's in not applying it. It has nothing to do with application. Uh, I believe there are some some things that are talked about that could be helpful to understand that this is uh, the human condition being expressed. Um, that in terms of blame and guilt and shame and things like that, that there is no, you know, I didn't create any of these things. But as Don points out, you know, it's not an excuse to behave and, you know, irresponsibly or treat people poorly. But it can help, I think, to, to notice that, that these things just arise. I think it's obvious too to see that these aren't my thoughts. I'm not the thinker of thoughts. I'm not the feeler of feelings. It's just what's happening. There's no one here doing that. That that's non-duality. But there, you know, there are other things I think that could be helpful to a person in their life. But non-duality, not really one of them. It's descriptive, not prescriptive. So. Yeah, I think to use it in a, a way that would uh, excuse bad behavior is to, to misuse the understanding and not to understand it at all. Not that this is even about understanding. Um, but the next question is, hello, do you both accept the differing types of non-duality? Uh, what types? Well, I, I don't know what that means, types, but I know there's, say, types to focus on awareness or consciousness. Um, you know, of course, in miracles is a type of non duality. But for me, in the end, all these teachings will negate themselves. It's like the saying about a thorn to remove another thorn and then you throw all the thorns away. So I see the types as that thorn. And then you can just toss them all away and not, not be attached to radical non-duality or whatever the other kinds of are called. I don't even know. But um, yeah, so do I accept them? Sure, I, I see them all as trying to point to this one no thing. And some people want to give it a name like awareness. Um, but I'm not attached to the name. So yeah, I can accept them all. I, I don't have a problem with any of it. Um, anyway, what do you think? Different types of non-duality. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. I, I mean, I think it's all right to name the big names like Eckhart Tolle and whatever I mean yes I mean totally you know his message resonated with me in his book the first couple of pages where he described his experience but yeah it's what comes with that like you say falls away you know like so like a practice around um stopping thought or or, or putting your attention to the pause between thoughts all you know, like it's all those practices and and everything else that goes with it, uh, all the sort of theory, whatever, that all falls away when this is seen. It's like seen for what it is, maybe, um, you know, self-inquiry, all those things. Some people get something out of it, but ultimately it's seen that, you know, there's no one who, who could bring this shift about. Like, you know, it's seen it's so that kind of, yeah, it comes back to just the basic message of there's no one, there never was anyone, and there's nothing happening, and yet there's all this. And, you know, it's really quite simple, but you can't write a book. Right? Well, people do, actually. <laughs> they just paraphrase, endlessly paraphrase. But, but yeah, it's, it's at the heart of a lot of teachings. It's, it's there in the religious teachings, too, although it's hard to extract from everything that surrounds it. So... Yeah, for sure. Um, mm. 
All right. And if there anyone in the Zoom wants to ask a question, just go right ahead and jump in. Otherwise, I'll keep going with these. Um, next question. Does non-duality undercut all psychology? That's a good one for you. Um, I just think they get mixed up, really. Like, um, it's this is beyond the psychological. Non-duality is beyond that. It's so it's the end of the psychological self. Um, but yeah, in the minds of people who try not to understand this, they can get confused. Um, so, and it can alter the psychology of. You know, some, when when someone wakes up, this this will alter the psychology to some extent. It won't if there's like in real pathological conditions. It may not do. It probably won't. Whether it's like narcissistic injury or something like that. So, but yeah, I mean, so this is beyond the mind. It's beyond psychology. It's it's seeing that there's no one. It's you know, but it's. When you try to understand it, you're using the mind to, to understand something that's beyond the mind. So it it just can't be done. It's just a it's an impossibility. Um, but psychology is important because even though there's a change, you know, before and after story patterns can continue. So it doesn't teach you how to live. Non-duality, the seeing of this doesn't teach you how to live. It certainly doesn't. So you can end up stuck just as you were before, but maybe not caring about that so much, maybe not suffering so much because of it. And maybe just not even seeing it less, you know, like, because suffering, pain, those emotions, if we're not assessing anger, we don't even know if our boundaries are being trespassed. We don't know that something's not okay unless we feel that it's not okay. So you know, it doesn't necessarily give us access to all our emotions. So for some people afterwards, they, they need to kind of contact that or get a sense of, get a sense of right and wrong, get a sense of, you know, what they feel as well. So, you know, so it's relevant as well. I mean, I think... What do you think? Well, yeah, they said, yeah, therapy can help the individual. <clears throat> well, it's, again, therapy is like anything else. It's, uh, I don't think non-duality negates the need for anything, including therapy um, or eating drinking or anything it's just non-duality is therapy <laughs> it's everything and or you could use the dream like you know it's a dream character going to therapy in the dream whatever uh it's just what's happening and yeah on a relative level which is where the the person lives it can help it can help change your perspective. It can help clarify things, um, help you see things more clearly in your life. And I'm a big proponent of therapy myself. Uh, I don't see, you know, non-duality helped me in certain ways, I guess you could say, um, because the seeking energy fell away, that thinking that there was some bigger, higher, grandiose state that I could arrive at. And there was nowhere to arrive, but there was just a seeing that it's all process for the person. There's no levels, there's no steps, there's no plateaus. It's just all process, apparently. I'll throw that in there for my radical non-duality listeners uh it's an apparent process but that's the human condition the human condition is really not to arrive at, at any place you know 
It's like my favorite, one of my favorite things from Alan Watts is about the dance. Just to dance the dance for the sake of dancing the dance, but not to arrive at any place on the floor at the end. I feel like oh, I completed the dance, you know, it's, or like a Zazen meditation. It's just staring at a wall for 20 minutes. There's no objective, there's, there's no idea of I'm gonna get something out of this. It's just a presence with what is. Um, and what is seems to always change. Well, staring at walls is very nice, isn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> staring at walls is really nice. It depends on the wall, but like. It can be. It can be, yeah. Pretty good. I think Andy had his hand raised. If you want to jump in, Andy, go right ahead. Yeah, hi. Um, so if you're, a, if you're a seeker and you're seeking enlightenment and you arrive at it, what's the return journey? A return journey? Yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're seeking anything in life, you're seeking anything, and then you find it, you find what you're seeking, what next? What next? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know what it, what it would be like to arrive at enlightenment. Is that, is that, I mean, do you think enlightenment is different to non-dual realization then? Yeah, because it's, it's, you know, to repeat, you know, things, but uh, it's seen that this is the way it always was, that there was never anyone here to get anything. And like I said, it's just all this apparent uh, play of life playing itself out, but there's no meaning or purpose into it. So there was no attainment. The attainment was an absence of, if anything, <laughs> of, uh, you know, this need to find some mysterious place called enlightenment. It was a, a seeing through of all that. Yeah. So yeah. there's no, so there's therefore, there's no sense of satisfaction or accomplishment or, or anything, but still what next? I mean, what do you, what do you, do you then have to bring that awareness back somehow and, Bring it back down to earth, if that's the right term. Well, there was no, you know, nobody to do that. So there was just a continuation of life as it was, but without this seeking, without the sense of separation, without all of that. And yes, I mean, it can sound like an attainment, I guess, because I was like, wow, you know, it was a mind-blowing thing and there was a, a seeing that this is what people have been talking about or pointing at or you know this is what what i've been reading about there was a recognition of that but there's nothing to do with that mm. you know i didn't uh then take that and i don't know do something with it or my life as it appeared wasn't changed in any way um but there was a lightness there, because of that i'd say the seeking energy had, had gone um that desperation to find something that never existed that urge to continually prop up this thing that wasn't real mm -hmm. But you still know, you still, you as a human being, you have hopes, desires, plans, or mm. is all that irrelevant? No, all that, all that stayed, yeah. It's still the same body, mind, organism, if you will, same, uh, yeah, a lot of that same stuff stayed. But things did fall away. I mean, you know, that's why it's, tricky to talk about because obviously I wasn't um, going after something anymore after that. I wasn't searching anymore. 
I didn't, you know, there was a lot of the f- lack or feeling less than, or th- these things kind of fell away as well. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so it probably does sound like an attainment, I guess. I'm just wondering if that's then different uh, if somebody's not a seeker, but they have a, like a spontaneous awakening, how do those things differ, if at all? You want to take that, Don? Well, it's all, I mean, spontaneous. What do you mean, differ, like spontaneous awakening? I mean, it's... Well, it seems like... It seems like um, you know, if something happens spontaneously, if you're not seeking something, but it happens, is that a different experience to somebody who was seeking that? Well, you may not know what's happened, I suppose. That's only difference, but the, the same experience, you know, if if you haven't been seeking and this happens all at once, um, which was experience here, you may not know what's happened. It may be easier to talk about in one sense because it's, the before and after story is quite clear cut because, it, you know, it, you're, you're, the per- shift in perspective is absolute. It isn't a sliding into this, which can, because it can seem to happen over time. It can seem to happen as a process, like for some people, or there can be glimpses or some idea. So, but it makes no difference overall to, to what goes after. I mean, why would it, in a sense, you know, like, so you know um and there can be different depths to it as well like uh, as well the the awakening although a lot of people would dispute that i mean once it's seen it's seen but for some it might be just absolutely no thought it might be just you know seeing the aliveness and everything so plans hopes desires everything can be completely gone in that like probably not forever like but for a long time and I think a lot of people get that as well like a honeymoon period where where none of that stuff is just relevant like it's just so gone like it because there's nothing because it's so fulfillment in the moment it's just there and it's so complete I guess Uh, that probably doesn't answer your question does it well it's it's different because I mean the question to answer the question to Walter was that once you attain what you've been seeking, what next? But that doesn't apply in a spontaneous case because you weren't seeking in the first place. So there is no there is no what next question. Yeah, but the seeking is there anyway. Like it's unconscious. Like everything. You you know you could say, and a lot of people do say that you know you go shopping, you're seeking whatever it is love, all these things to to create that sense of ease up sense of peace maybe you go to therapy for that maybe you have a relationship and you're hoping for that and maybe just for a moment there's this cessation of of desire a cessation of that sense of lack isn't there just for a moment but but then you come back to you know obviously like falling in love it, you rub up against each other eventually so you come back to reality and so nothing fulfills that so even if you haven't been seeking I wasn't seeking the collapse of this put it in that you know I wouldn't talk about I was an actual seeker so I wasn't but you know it's the same thing it's it's absolute fulfillment so there isn't this so in my case maybe intrigue desires like that fell away because there's nothing no need to distract myself from what is because it's so beautiful right here right now is so beautiful there's no need to run away from it into whatever it is alcohol shopping relationships food or whatever your go-to thing is like it's just all here and it's beautiful and it's the stillness of scene and so it's just coming home you know the thing that you were seeking through the alcohol if alcohol is your problem it's it's this it's that stillness it's that absence of self which can kind of be sensed can't it like in moments like and holidays beautiful sunsets or something where the mind stops for a minute and there's just that wow just that like isn't that beautiful and maybe the mind stops for a split second so it's the same same collapse you can see that your whole life's been a striving to fill something 
the ex- from the externals achievement I didn't do very well with that like <laughs> achievement relationships possessions all that stuff and it doesn't cut it and never cuts it so it's seen that that's what was being sought ultimately it's the only thing that kind of brings up fulfillment you know like you know okay thanks thank you andy All right, next question. Um, yeah, and I just say one more thing about that is that the reason why there's no enlightenment, awakening, liberation, any of that, because there, what's seen is that there is nobody to become enlightened and it was always just this, whatever's appearing, arising from no thing, falling back into no thing. And even that is, to conceptualize and, you know, try to explain this. Um, So that doesn't do it justice. But you'll hear a lot of people say the character, because there's no separate individual entity. But there is this apparent character in this apparent dream. So maybe in the dream, there's a, a lightness Maybe in the dream, things seem to have changed, but they could, same with therapy. A character in a dream can go to a therapist and and have a different perspective and maybe feel a little bit lighter about things. So there's nothing special about non-dual realization. It's all just what's appearing from no thing. It, you know, and... So there is no attainment because there's no separation. There's no separate individual attaining anything. And it's already whole, complete, and perfect. It can't be improved upon. It can only be seemingly improved upon in the dream, in the dream of a separate individual whose life is all of a sudden better because he knows or she knows there's no separation. But that's also in the dream of separation. So enlightenment is another story. Um, I saw another hand raise. Sorry, I forget the name. Go for it. Uh, Rakesh. Hey. Hello. Hi. <laughs> hey. How's it going? Good, nice good. to see you. Yeah, good to see you both. Um, I joined a bit late, so forgive me if I ask something that someone else has asked or make you repeat yourself. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I just, it was, I guess it's kind of more aimed at Walter, but maybe Dawn, you can give your uh, two cents as well. But um, I lately have stumbled across A Course in Miracles and um it really seems to be resonating and i saw your talk a few days ago with uh a lady i can't forget her, i can't remember her name um but um i think she was uh, south american or something but anyway um but yeah it's just it's really resonating and i i was curious more about your experience with it Walter like how did you come across it and when in your in your apparent journey did you did you come across it oh when did I come across it um well luckily I had a friend my friend Stephen Wingate uh was helping me with it because it's a challenging book to read for sure at least it was for me. And to be honest, I never finished the lessons. I never read the entire text. I just, I just couldn't do it. <laughs> but I absorbed a lot of it uh, through doing the lessons that I did do and reading what I did read. And also I checked out uh, Ken Wapnick. I don't know if you're familiar with that name. Um, he passed away not that long ago, but 
he's a great uh, teacher of the course. And I got a lot from listening to his explanation of it. Also, I'm going to be interviewing uh, David Hoffmeister soon, who's a, a, also another great teacher of Course in Miracles. Um, but yeah, I, I was in it for a couple of years trying to, you know, understand it and everything else. But that was prior to any kind of shift. Um, but now it seems like the, the things that I read or whatever, they just kind of come out of me sometimes, like the things I remember. And they seem to fit perfectly. Like I give everything all the meaning it has. If those all those first lessons, you know, nothing in this room means anything. You know, this table is meaningless. This is me. All these, everything's meaningless. All these thoughts are meaningless. Everything on the streets meaningless. You know, all this this thing about meaning and purpose and seeing that uh, it's all comes from mind. You know, and there's a lot about projection in there. Projection makes perception. So, you know, what I believe about the world was projected out there and then reflected back to me. And I thought that was, uh, you know, somebody asked about, can it be applied or can, I thought a lot of those lessons uh, might've helped me sort of in my daily life and kind of understanding things a little bit better from that perspective. So yeah, I found it helpful on a relative level. And, and now I just think it's a, just another way to share this message with different language. Um, a lot of Christian language talking about Holy Spirit and obviously Jesus and everything. So it's just another thorn to be thrown away eventually. <laughs> but that's my experience with it. I, I can't lie and say I you know, did all the lessons. I, I don't know how far I got, but those first ones really show you uh, you know, about meaning and purpose and, and um and where it comes from and how that's created. And you're, you know, basically I think some of the most powerful things are seeing that I made it all up, you know, that I am the source of love. Like someone's asking about relationship, you know, if I'm in a relationship and I'm feeling love, that love's coming from here. It's not coming from there. It's being projected out there and being reflected back. I think that's my source of love out there, you know, and then you give this all the meaning and importance and love and significance, but it's coming from in here, you know, and that's amazing to see that. Um, but anyway, that's a few things about the course. I don't know. Is that good? Good yeah. enough? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I would say tune into David Hoffmeister and come to the Zoom because uh, he's really a teacher of Course of Miracles. Rakesh, okay. why is it resonating with you? Like, I'm curious what that is because obviously you've already seen, you know, you've seen non-duality and everything. Like, what is it with you now? Like, um, I'm not too sure. It, it, it feels like... I did stumble across it a while ago, but it didn't, it kind of just didn't make any sense to me. Um, and yeah, a friend of mine um, sent me a video of someone and he was speaking in this way. And then, I don't know, it's like something just clicked, something made sense. And it, it, now it's like, it seems just really powerful. Um, and it, yeah, I do. It's just maybe I just wasn't ready to hear it um, before, and now I, I can kind of just I don't know. It feels like it's unlocked unlocked some translator or something. <laughs> um, yeah. Is there anything like energetic as well when you're reading it? Like a little bit yeah i think it's probably more energetic than anything else um i'm not actually reading the book um i'm just um dipping into other people reading the book because I, I i'm sound orientated i like listening um uh -huh. and um 
in, yeah a lot there are some things that make more sense intellectually but yeah a lot of it it does feel energetic like, especially before bed um just putting it on before bed just feeling a, a lot of joy um welling up and um it seems to be seeping into my day-to-day -day, that joy um but it's only been a, a couple of weeks since i've been exploring it so you know i don't know if that will continue but um yeah it's just i just i find uh, another thing i thought i don't know if this is what it is but um because i've grown up with a hindu like upbringing like you know it's that kind of religious way of communicating has been around me my whole life but i never really understood it it was always in like hindi or like very thick gujarati or sanskrit so i i just didn't really understand what they were saying um so maybe that element of it is what's speaking to me because it's like it's kind of it's not religious but it, it has that kind of terminology yet it's speaking a language i i can understand um, so i don't know wow so the energetic effect does it infiltrate your dreams or anything else or like yes very much so yeah it, are they very spiritual dream like is anything you'd share or not um they're quite i mean i have crazy dreams anyway um but yeah there's been a couple of um particular particularly memorable dreams <laughs> one of them was um i was in the desert um <laughs> with a, and uh, i met some people on some camels and they gave me um <laughs> it's, it sounds like that? such a cult they gave me a, a sip of some juice <laughs> <laughs> and I, I drank the juice and the juice seemed to like it was like uh, I don't know it's like some downloading some kind of knowledge and the, the knowledge just stayed and then um, and then uh, like a couple of other you know weird things like that and then also a um, couple of nights ago as well um, just yeah I, I, I'd be talking for a while if I went through everything, but um, the only one, other one that I can summarise is it just was experiencing dreams in a different way than usual. Um, right. It felt more like very still imagery, just almost like uh, looking at files on a computer. It was just like information, but I, I don't know what the information was. And it was just like, here's a file. And then closing it, and here's a file, and closing it, and I, th that's the best I can describe. I don't know what was going on, but it didn't feel like any other way of dreaming that I've ever dreamt before. So you weren't in the dream; you were kind of observing, obser no, observing this yeah. kind of happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah I wasn't and there was to it. it. Just, just a revelation of whatever the hell it was, like yeah it just felt that information and it just it felt i could feel in my body uh, but i was also just the yeah the best i could describe it is like opening files on a computer are they any more are those dreams any more real than your normal dreams do you think or just to see them kind of or more vivid in any way or just like the same just curious they felt a bit they they felt very different to my usual dreams that the, the the one I just described felt very different. It felt like uh, quite um, I felt less involved. I just felt less like, like you said, just kind of observing it. I didn't even feel fully asleep, really. Mm, okay. Yeah. Does, does that have any? Did yeah? I was wondering why you do you did you? What's it? Well, if, I mean, I've had similar in the dreams where nothing's happening, just watching, but not not like a download, but like just watching like, I don't know, like a starry sky shooting stars or something or water falling and, and, and nothing else, just that or light coming through curtains, but no story. But it feels just so blissful and beautiful, but um, not not download stuff. 
exactly, but maybe I could relate a little bit to, in some ways, well, maybe one or two, not not quite like that, but I've maybe slight versions of that, like, but, but it's, but I, I think, you know, like, cause I don't know you've got the Kundalini stuff as well, don't you? And, the dreams that kind of involve that kind of energy are different, aren't they? Like, mm-hmm. you know, they're more colorful and more exciting and they're, the, mm-hmm. the energy's definitely different anyway, but yeah. at the course of miracles, I never did it. <laughs> but, no, did, did yeah. you ever have a look at it? Just... I, I, I did, I mean, I, I was before awakening and, I remember going to Waterstones in Piccadilly, which is a massive one. And I went up to the desk and I said, I'm looking for the Course of Miracles. And whoever was behind the desk got very excited. And then someone came over and said, oh, I know where it is. And so I followed them. And then someone else went, what did I hear? Course of Miracles. And they got it off the shelf. And I just sort of thought this is so, you know, all this synchronicity. And uh, of course, I got it back and I got to like lesson two. And I was just like, no, it's just, it was just too it just seemed to I couldn't get my head around it like I, I so I I've still got it but I haven't done anything with it so I but yeah I know it resonates with some people and then some people get I heard someone say that some people get very obsessive about it because you know when they get year after year because it's 365 lessons aren't there 365 days so get caught but I guess some of these things just really hit with some people don't they like mm-hmm. but, uh, so I didn't but I I'm not anyway still got it though (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah it does seem to have um ramped up synchronicities like even just you know looking into it and then within a couple of days um Walter you you were talking about it on your your channel that was uh Shirley Shirley Kanowski that's right yeah yeah and um yeah just I was just like oh you know I'm here I am looking into it and it's just coming up on random channels that I follow and yeah. It resonates so much more now because like the forgiveness, it's radical forgiveness, you know, forgive them for what they did not do, you know, and seeing that uh, no one ever did anything and nothing ever happened. And it talks about no hierarchy and illusions, which I think is a, an amazing way to say this that you know same with the dream analogy if it's if it's all a dream then you know one part of the dream is not better than another part of the dream or if it's all an illusion one illusion can't be higher than another illusion because they're it's all an illusion you know so it's kind of like Advaita Vedanta wrapped in Christian terminology but I see it as the same message um and if you can get through all of it and see in the end that, yeah, we never left heaven. None of this ever happened. There, there really is no decision maker, even though it talks about choosing the Holy Spirit and things like that. But I think that's, you know, for the individual on the path to take a look at some of these things. That. You know, it's just a different perspective from a world of guilt, shame, and blame to complete forgiveness for never having done anything. Yeah. Or, you know, it says, uh, I'm not a body, I am free, or I am as God created me, or something like that, so... So, yeah, I'm not this limited little self that I always thought I was. Yeah, it's nice. It, it, it just, it, there seems to be an element of joy about it when I, when I, when I even like hearing other people talk about it, like you now, it just seems to be like this layer of pleasantness. I don't know. It's it's a powerful teaching. But yeah, it was a part of my seeking journey and I just couldn't complete it. But I I feel like it it means more to me now. (laughs) Because I think those words 
I like the way it's expressed. So I borrow from whatever I came across, uh, you know, in my seeking, just kind of stuck in my head and it just comes out. But it's not something I study or... Nice. Thanks. Nice to well, see you both. <laughs> nice to see you too. <laughs> yeah, we, hopefully we get... see you in person soon. Uh, that would be cool. Yeah. Well, thank you, Rakesh. Yes. No worries. We got some questions in the chat. Uh, any advice for those in their 20s going through awakening and its after effects? Identity keeps crumbling while the opposite is happening for peers, specifically around areas such as relationships and work. Uh, Don, you, can you uh, take that one first, please? I don't know. I mean, I guess the difficulties, it's going to be more difficult in some ways because of motivation collapsing at a time when in your 20s, you're like, trying to kind of test your ego out, see how strong you are, see what you can do and achieve, experimenting. And so that might fall away. So it could be more difficult. Um, you might, I don't know, you could end up estranged a little bit from your peer group and um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it probably helps to chat to someone, maybe the speaker or something about that. Um, yeah, I guess it's becoming more common because, so, yeah, it's not, not easy. It might be quite scary as well if you don't get on with things as well, because, yeah, I mean, um, I must, and, and I guess you, you, there's probably very few people who do understand you. I know this is becoming more common and. I don't know where you go with that. It's difficult because, you know, you tell your parents that's not going to be great, is it? And uh, you might be at uni. Uh, yeah, it can be a lonely one. I think that that could be very isolating and confusing, maybe. I don't know. What about you, Walter? What do you think? Um, hmm. Identity crumbling in your 20s. Yeah, I don't know what to say about that. Well, the identity is really strong in your 20s, isn't it? It's, you know, it, it kind of, yeah, I mean, that's, it's all about ego, isn't it? And so, yeah, it can be, that's got to be tough, that, I think. You know, I don't know, but maybe nice. But, Yeah, sorry. I, it didn't, you know, identity. I didn't go through an identity crumbling, you know. It was just there full on, and then it wasn't. And But I didn't have sort of a process of crumbling, or I think there was somebody here last week I, I felt was going through that. And he's in, a, I would assume, his 50s anyway. So it's not any less painful, whatever age you are. There's maybe a lot more at stake when you're younger. But um, yeah, it was just full on and then full on not, <laughs> you know, whatever, the opposite of that. And so I didn't sort of have this slow crumbling or, so I have a hard time relating to that. So I can't answer, that's why I feel like I can't answer it. I think it was right. that, sorry. sorry. No, go ahead. Like because my the identity I had was terrible. <laughs> 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 it was kind of like, but yeah, it didn't crumble, it just fell away. And it's like, oh thank God, I don't have to live like that anymore. Like that was gone. Like, what a relief. But yeah, it, there wasn't some consequences. I don't know if I'd been in my 20s. Well, it'd probably been a relief as well because my identity was shit then too, but different, very, very different. But yeah. 
All right. I don't know, like a speaker you resonate with, chat to them. I mean, I just talk to somebody who gets where you're at, you know, probably help, I would have thought. Does the shadow side of a human being, using Carl Jung's terms, have a place in non-duality? Well, only in terms of like, so radical acceptance is all of it. Like, you know, the dark, you know, I think in a sense, a lot of those sort of moral judgments fall away in seeing this. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but um, because everything's accepted, right? It doesn't mean to say it's light from the individual. You talk about the, the relative and absolute. So you know that someone's not that if they present as evil or when something dark in yourself arises, say a thought you don't like, there's much more acceptance of it. It's, oh, wow. So that's that's what's going on in my mind or that's what I feel. And there's much more acceptance of that as well in parts of the story that may have seemed unacceptable. A lot of judgment can fall away from that. Um, so, so in a sense, yes, it doesn't mean integrating the shadow, which is something else. I think integrating the shadow not acting it out which would be so you join the dots up and on your history of like why patterns repeat and what it is you're doing to create that or whatever and you're kind of um not acting it out as in living it as in speaking angrily you you, you start to see more and more of what's in you rather than projecting it out there so you see the envy in yourself rather than out there you see the jealousy you see the hate the anger the, you know yeah there is there I think there definitely is more of that and there's more comfort because it's okay so what if anger arises so what if hate arises so because it's natural it's it's what we are we have all those feelings we just do and there's a reason for them they're information for us you know and so yes but it's not the whole non-duality does not mean that you've integrated your shadow material like if you're narcissistic everything is shadow anyway because there never was a self to begin with in in terms of an egoic self that never existed so everything is projected out that cannot be assimilated i don't think it can maybe i'm wrong you know i can't speak for you know i don't know what i'm <laughs> don't know i don't see how that could be assimilated because there's you know because there's been a lot of damage there but I don't know I don't want to say never and I'm not a clinical psychologist and I'm not a psychiatrist so so yeah but definitely makes things easier there's more acceptance there's less morality in the common kind of judgments because you just see how a story has lived nobody was doing that this is how it played out and it's okay my story is okay your story is okay I may not like you though and stay away <laughs> or I might like you but you know like it's you you know you're you're not that and they're not that so it can help with that for sure it can help but um it's not the end like shadow work's never really complete in a way not that it's work but it's just about seeing more and more isn't it because seeing what's going on internally and looking at your reactions to things and exploring that, you know, um, cause sometimes it's about you and sometimes it's actually not about you. So you've got to be careful there too, um, that you don't see it all as projection, but a lot of people just go through lives projecting everything. It's, you know, it's take, not taking no responsibility for stuff. So yeah. Mm. All right. Well, that uh, brings us to the end of the meeting. I'll just give a few plugs for upcoming events on this channel. Obviously, not just this is every Monday, same time, 2 p.m. Eastern time. And then I also have next Monday, May 1st, 7 p.m. Eastern, Roger Castillo. Following Monday, May 8th at 10 a.m. Eastern, Chuck Hillig. And then we got Monday, May 15th, Howard Chance, followed by Monday, May 22nd, with David Hoffmeister at 9 a.m. Eastern. And if you're a Course of Miracles fan, then I would 
suggest coming to that 9 a.m. Eastern on Monday, May 22nd. After that, I'm going to take a couple of weeks off for vacation, and we'll be back with more non-duality fun for you. Um, and all this is free, but any donations would be appreciated. There is a PayPal. And with that, Don Garland. Well, uh, yeah, just thanks for coming and enjoy it and see you next Monday, hopefully, some of you. You want to plug it, plug any uh dates? Um well, my own meeting is in in, in London, the Hampstead one is the second Friday in every month. So the next one's in May, that I don't know. Whatever the second Friday is, seven to nine PM. So apart from that, I have nothing else to plug. Yeah, it's Friday the twelfth of May is the next one. Uh, it's seven PM British time. All right, fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. See you next week.